Welcome back to Brewpeg. Last week you saw us start our bollard. So let's get into it. It's surprising how many boats don't actually have something decent along the side of them to be able to tie up with. Our old boat didn't. And it was something that always frustrated Jess and I when we were trying to tie that boat up along docks. And when we realised this boat has exactly the same issue, Jess's first words were bollards to that. Brewpeg was a sunken fishing trawler that was stripped out and ready for the scrapyard. She's just completed a 10 year rebuild that's brought her back to life. With the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and subscribers, she'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the description below. Things have progressed somewhat. This is all tacked together, it's time to start welding it out properly. Those conservables, it's not good. But we um we have lost the others, <laughs> replacement ones. We looked everywhere this morning, we couldn't find them. So we decided, do we go into town an hour and a half, or do we just smash it out now? I'm going to show you this. <laughs> Ta -da! No, it actually worked okay, but it's just really hard to c control it. The heat was all over the place, and the angles weren't great. So, but it's done, and I'm just going to grind it now to tidy it up. But I do need Dame. Can you draw me a what I'm Grinding up to otherwise, you know me, I'll just keep going. So. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's really close. Um, just need a knock. Uh, actually, to just grind that off actually, and then you can, can, you, can you grind, like, just tidy up. grind the edge, like the flat bit around there, get back to be a steel, because we're going to yeah. do it for welding anyway. Yeah. But it means I can, this lumpy should be gone so we can draw it properly. Okay. So I've got a little way through, but it's you know it's a lot to, to grind off, um, and I don't want to hurt my uh, my body. So although I'm back on the tools, there are limits. So I've brought in the he heavy artillery <laughs> named Damien. This is the slot that Jess cut earlier. We just cleaned it up with the grinder so it fits in nice. You can see it sort of sinks halfway into the board. The bollard sinks into the board. <laughs> um, one of the thoughts we have, we have the ability to adjust the angle so we can tuck it hard up to the side of the boat. But you can see how it sort of digs like, this back out yeah, this way. As well as either, yeah. actually, if we weigh out, yeah. Um, so, what we're thinking is sort of straighten it up roughly vertical like that so that you've got plenty of drainage at the bottom so nothing's going to get stuck behind. You can also weld all the way around um, and it tips this out a little bit so that you don't, like, you're less likely to catch yourself on it. So, um, but there is a bend to that, like to get enough length on that piece of pipe, there's a slight curve. You see there's a bit of a curve at the end there. So if we turn that the other way, then it'll come out If we spin it around that way. Yeah. It sort of tucks the bottom in and tucks the top in at the same time. Yeah, something okay. like that. Yeah. I think the welding on the inside will be a little bit easier too, because you've got a wee bit of a lip. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um, mark that up and get that welded in. Have you got a pen? Yeah. Just got to be careful about that. Yeah, just need to figure out where to grind the... Yeah. I've seen that one come sit out a little bit, yeah. so straightening them off. Yeah. Those welds I should have put them on a slight angle or something. I should have, uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Never mind.
With my brain injury recovered enough that I'm starting to feel more like myself and I can start retaining new information. Dame's reteaching me TIG, um, so I'm starting to learn today. So I'm going to use what's called lay wire, which I literally just lay the wire in the in the corner and then I just start moving my TIG torch back and forth across it. The other technique is where you dip it into the puddle and you keep moving your torch and then you keep dipping it. But it's much easier to learn lay wire than it is to learn dipping. Mm. So, um, so I'll just show you what I'm doing with the torch. So I get lots of heat building up and then I make sure that I can see puddles on both sides. And I just zigzag up, down, up, down, up, down the whole time. So you don't want to pull away too fast. Okay, we're going to wait till that gas runs out. And what you'll see, the see you can see that pattern. So you can sort of see there's a like a curve pattern going like that, which basically follows what I did with the torch. So I'm going up melting, down melting, up melting, down melting the whole time because if I have, say this side gets melted and this side doesn't, it won't stick to it. So you'll end up with a big bulbous weld hanging off here and it'll just break off the surface. So if you melt it in like this, you can see it's sort of blended into the both pieces of steel. I've got really good fusion because I've melted the top, then melted the bottom, then top, then bottom, and I've kept zigzagging back. So I've got melting Are you on both going sides. straight up and down or are you curving up and down? Assume the end of this is the tungsten. I'm, I'm going up down, up, down, mm. and I'm pulling towards me the whole time. It is a curve, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's like a zig, like a it's arrow. Yeah, yeah, like, like an arrow. Like arrows, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, but the whole time this is sort of sitting in here, and I'm going up, down, up, down, over top of this. Mm. So this will melt a couple of millimetres in front of where your puddle is, but it'll keep pulling this, this stainless rod, it'll keep pulling it back into the puddle. So you'll get, this is 309 stainless, you'll keep getting 309 stainless putting into the puddle, because the heat will just drag it in. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay. So um, I'll I'll um find some scrap in the next week and I'll have a go and maybe get you just to remind me. Down, okay. you know, Twenty second memory, brain injury. I've got to relearn and relearn and relearn and, and build that muscle memory really. So I'll leave it to it. Eh? We uh, now. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, can I swap with the helmet? Oh yeah. It doesn't have the detachable oh, lens. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Eh? Thank you for sacrificing yourself and giving me the good gear. Right, all welded in. Boat's capable of being tied up now. Yeah, just when you're ready. <laughs> what are you up to? I'm just tidying it up. Ah, ah, ah. Look at this amazing step. Pat built this, he found a bit of tread plate, and then decided, you know what, just needs a step. So he knocked up this thing at an angle line in about, I don't know, 10 minutes or something after he yeah. came up with the idea. He was so determined to give me a hand, I was really struggling to get up and down. Yeah, it's, thanks Pat, it's amazing. It's pretty bloody cool. It's, it's quite sturdy too. I love the fact that there's a lip. Yeah. So you can, you know, you don't sort of fall off it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so lovely of him. What have you been doing over here? Well, I'm just trying to tidy it up and make it look more like, I think there's two different fonts. Um, so it was looking sort of funny, but I'm trying to make the R look more like an R. We're going to do another one with our font. Um, we're going to do it on our laser printer. Um, but just, this was just so we could get legal fast. This was for the um, sea trial. We put yeah. it on basically the day before the sea trial or something. And here you've got to have this on to you know, be, show you're registered and be legal. So we've got this area on the deck just here that has a very slight lip running along here where the, this um, half round's welded to the boat. We've got a very slight lip from the deck to that level and as such we get a little bit of rust in there. I'm going to change how I'm doing this. I'm going to needle gun this off, rust kill it and then prime it up so that it won't rust anymore. And then I'm actually thinking of fairing it and doing a skim of fairing so the curve of the deck, um, it, it basically climbs up and over the lip and allows any water to go over the side. Don't like the fact that water can sit in here. So what was fairly rusty comes up quite clean. I'll see if I can get a real close up for you to show you what the needle gun brings it up like. So you can sort of see 
there's a few pit holes and things. So things like this, you can see these pit holes. These are down deep enough. But see there's something sitting in that one, something sitting in that one. I need to give those a bit more of a needle gun because that's a bit of rust that's just sitting in a dimple like that. Same with this one over here. I need to keep going until we get those out and then we can put some paint in. If you don't get those little things that sit in the dimples out, basically it rusts underneath. You can paint over the whole thing, but it will rust underneath that bit of metal and then that'll pop off and you'll end up with rust and the whole process starts again. So you need to actually take your time, make sure you've got zero loose flaky rust in there. Now that I've got that paint on, you can kind of see that lip, how much it sticks up. It sticks up probably a good 10 mil, 15 mil in places from the deck. The deck, um, it, it obviously when they built this, they never care about that lining up perfectly because this gate was never here. We added that gate in, so um, previously it wasn't an issue. Now it is because we've added the gate. We need to deal with that water egress out over the side. In an Aussie summer, you kind of need to plan your work as to where you're going to be working. So. On that side of the boat where I was needle gunning, sanding and just before painting, um, the sun hasn't got to it yet. The sun's still on that side of the boat. You can kind of see just how bright it is over there compared to sort of the darkness of this side of the boat over here. I have to sand that side of the boat that's in the sun. I'm going to delay that until this afternoon, but in the meantime, I'm going to get on with the exhaust. I need to extend the main exhaust. We need to start building the exhaust for the gen set as well. I'm going to try and get that done while we're in this work berth still. We're hopefully trying to extend our time as much as possible in this work berth, so we're ready to go. We've got the bollard done, but we need to push on and try and get as much of the outside work done as possible because in the new berth, we can't do any like large outside work. We, have, we can do stuff on the inside. We can do some basic painting and quiet stuff. We can't do any decent work. Um, we have to go on anchor for that. So yeah, exhaust for the gen set is really critical for us to be able to go on anchor and do that work. So the two exhausts really matter if we're to leave the dock and go and do work out on anchor. We need the main exhaust extended up so we don't get smoke going in the back end of the wheelhouse because we haven't got the windows on the wheelhouse yet. And we need the gen set exhaust done so that we can run the gen set while we're off uh, offshore power and that allows us to have plenty of power for plasmas and welders, grinders, all that sort of stuff. We've got a decent amount of solar but we don't have enough charge controllers and we don't have uh, a big enough battery bank at the moment so we can't utilize all of the solar that we have. We've got roughly a third of it hooked up. Okay on the back end of Brewpeg we've got this exhaust shroud. This is just a big stainless shroud that we made. Let me show you. It hides our main exhaust and it's a piece of uh, what do we make this out of? I think it was two mil or two and a half mil stainless. It's pretty heavy and it's folded to be that specific shape. It's a different size at the top and the bottom and it's all folded to meet. What I need to do, this is actually a, an air channel. So air gets blasted from the bottom, from the engine room. There's a big fan that will eventually be put in there that blasts air up and it goes out past the exhaust. So the exhaust is essentially air cooled as it goes up past here so no one can actually burn themselves. The exhaust itself isn't super hot, but this is just an additional safety feature and it pulls hot air out of the engine room. So two jobs I need to do. Extend the exhaust and secure this shroud. I've already unbolted the exhaust pipe from down the bottom, so I should be able to just pull it up. Never taken it off for a long time, so I can't remember how it goes. Okay. One exhaust pipe. All right, here is our piece of six inch exhaust pipe. I need to extend this guy. And it's pretty difficult to extend pipe if you don't have the right tools. So let's make the right tools. The quick and dirty way to extend pipe is to get a bit of angle iron and just stick it between the two pieces where your join is. So you're half on one pipe, half on the other and clamp it to it. You can either ratchet strap it or you can clamp it depending on the diameter of the pipe. And that's enough to get them in line but it's a bit of a pain in the neck having to try and do that every single time at every joint. So there's an easy way using a couple of clamps and a piece of angle line to do the same thing, but you make a tool that's super simple to be able to take on and off at each joint. Take a regular old wood clamp. This is a new wood clamp that I bought for this job and clamp it with some angle line. You can sort of see it's not super long. It's probably 10 inches long, 200 mil, or maybe more 250 mil, something like that. Um, and you can see I clamp it halfway down in the middle there. Now I need to take the paint off that uh, clamp because what I'm going to do is weld the clamp to the angle iron. I'm going to do it straight obviously, I just it's not clamped super tight, but I'm basically going to weld the clamp on the bottom side and then the top side allows me to, there'll be another clamp, one at this end and one at this end here. Straighten that back up. So there'll be another clamp over here and then you have your joint of the pipe in the middle here. The angle iron does all the alignment so you know the two halves are basically going to be in line with each other and this here can adjust up and down depending on the size of the pipe. Now, 
The biggest that we pretty much deal with is uh, six inch. I think we've got some 10 inch pipe up the top, which should just fit in this here, might be a squeeze. Um, but this will do anything from say one inch pipe right up to 10 inch pipe. And it's an incredibly simple tool to make. Two welding surfaces cleaned up. Let's clamp that guy in there. Luxor. You know what, let's straighten it up with a bit of pipe. There we go, bit of pipe holding it nice and straight. So you just need to weld those clamps onto that angle line there. Ow, zap. Why did we not get a good earth? Let's put the earth on that then. I don't really want to touch it now. Don't trust it. Ah! Why did I get zapped? Oh, you dickhead, that's the plasma cutter earth. Funny how it works so much better now. Now when you go out into your shed tonight and you decide you're going to make one of these to extend your 6 inch exhaust pipe that you happen to have lying around, the really key thing is to make sure that you got these two in line because if you do, you can do this. You can sit your jig down on a bench and they'll rock perfectly because you realise that you haven't got them in line. Okay, size matters, obviously. Brewpeg's exhaust, we have two options, really tall, really short. Really short is great from an engineering point of view because you don't have a big moment arm and you don't have to do lots of bracing and stuff. However, the smell goes into the boat, goes onto the solar panels and goes into the windows and all that sort of stuff. It's a pain. So the other option, really tall. You can do that, but it's a pain from an engineering point of view because then you have to do lots of bracing and so on. But it's great from a smell point of view. However, the trawlers normally have really, really tall exhausts. I'm talking like 15, 20 feet up in the air. They're really tall. And that's because they haul their nets up the side of the A-frame and the gantries, and the exhaust needs to be taller than that so it doesn't put soot all over the, the nets and all of their equipment. They can do that though because they've got that great big structure at the top, the A-frames, that they can brace the exhaust off. So they don't have to worry too much about that moment arm because they've got something to bolt it to right up high. We don't have that. So we need to do something. We need to get the exhaust as high as we can get it from a smell point of view, but still low enough that we don't have to do some sort of crazy bracing at the top end of the roof. So here's a good example. So I've just put the clamp on. Just undo it. You see how they're not lining up at all? They're miles away. You might be able to see that. But when I clamp this, just nip them up. I'm hoping I can get it on the camera. Nip that up tight. That becomes perfectly flush. Oh, it's maybe a mil or so out, but miles, miles better. So what you do is you work your way around so you find where it's flush and you just keep tacking around because this pipe is not perfectly round, like it's an oval, so you're never gonna get them perfect. But if you just work your way around, you can get it within a fraction of a millimeter. So that's pretty much bang on right there. So I'll put a tack there and then I'll work around to here. I'll clamp these in and I'll just keep working my way all the way around. And with these two pieces of non-straight non-circular pipe, they're basically squashed and whatever, I'll be able to get them perfectly joined and I know they're straight in that orientation too. Here's a good example. The pipe hasn't been cut perfectly straight and you can sort of see it in that gap there. So there's a, a gap here, there's no gap there, there's a tiny gap there, there's an overlap up here. So when I end up with something like that, that like an overlap that's going to cause the pipe not to line up perfect, I actually just get the one mil cutoff disc and start from the gap down here and slice right the way up and just put a one mil recess because we can easily weld that up but it also means you don't end up with any interference pipe to pipe as you're trying to get it aligned. So I just tighten one up more than the other and I can bend them in left or right depending on which one I want. You can see after running the one mil down, you've got a pretty easy, nice, consistent gap. You can go down and just tighten it up, adjust it however you need to, and then again, carry on working your way around and you'll get it perfectly aligned.
to go tacked right the way around. And you can see how straight that pipe ends up. It's a pretty nice way of joining them. With so many jobs on the go, trying to make uh, the boat tidy while that's happening is just not possible. So that's why there is currently stuff everywhere on the back deck. We're just racing from one job to the next because we don't have many days at this wharf and we can't do this sort of work at the new berth. So we're not tidying, we're just keeping on working. I am also struggling with wind a wee bit, so hence I'm down on the deck welding behind a ammunition box as a wind barrier. And just in case you're nervous that that could be an explosion risk, I want to assure you that I've taken almost all of the ammunition out of that box. So it's a fairly uniform weld all the way around. It's not the straightest or perfect weld, but for what it is, it'll be perfectly fine. Eventually this is going to be buried inside another cover, so you won't even see this weld. It's completely non-visible when it's finished. We're going to be building a funnel over top of all of these pipes, but the pipes are going to be exposed for the next wee while until we get that funnel built. So we need to find out if this piece of pipe that we've just put together is actually long enough. I don't think it is, but we really don't know how long we need to go until we start measuring it. So I've got a total length, I've just measured that off. We're going to stand up on the roof and now figure out how tall that's going to be, if it's going to be enough. It won't be. But, you know, let's just measure it so we look professional. So I told you about the trawlers not being here, so I can't show you the tall exhaust. One's just turned up, so I can show you the tall exhaust. So this one's just arrived back, and if you have a look, see that exhaust? You got the, basically the green hull, the white cabin, you got the dinghy on top of the cabin, and then right up the top, right up there, is the top of the exhaust, and the genset exhaust, they both go about the same sort of area. So they're really, really tall, but they are braced on the A-frame up there. We can't go that tall. We also don't really need to go that tall either. So this is the tip that we're going to be putting on the exhaust. It's a piece of six inch stainless with a nice 45 at the end of it. Um, it's quite tall, but that's about where the current exhaust pipe would be if we set it up at the moment. The pipe extension is 137 centimeters, 1.37 meters. So that, that's roughly where the tip would be. I think we've come up with our size, so that was where we have the exhaust right now. I think we need it a bit higher, so we'll probably go just to one standard Jess. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think we've got our height. She does love sort of listening in and just sitting there. I think she gets the breeze through up underneath from in the, the fans and the air conditioning. This is her spot she's taken over. She just sits in the hatch because there's a piece of mesh there that's designed to have her not escape. That was when she first arrived, that we, one of the rules from the rescue place was that we had to keep it in, indoors. We put little mesh on everything, but now it's her little bed. You're not actually eating that, are you? Don't eat it. If anyone is curious, we use wedding veil because the insects here, the, the midges, are so, um, are so little they get through mosquito mesh. So we use this with a bit of velcro on the just around it, and she loves tearing it up. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Easy to, easy to. Oh, nail. <laughs> Radio and expert. I'm gonna put this top piece on this bottom piece, but I got very little room to work with. You can see there's a flange there that stops my tool from getting on there easily. So I've managed to get one little bit in the right place. So I'm just going to tack it and then work my way around sort of manually using a clamp just to push it into the right orientation and the right sort of trueness.
Righto, tip has been welded on to the small extension piece, the one meter extension. We don't need a meter, we need 300 mil, which is about there. So we're cutting pretty much most of that off. Two, two thirds of that off is gonna be gone. We're gonna be left with about a one foot extension, which then needs to be welded to the pipe that's sitting out the back. The big long fella. This might be a bit of a mission because I can't open this jaw, it's big enough to actually clamp this. So this is just sitting on there for now. So this may go pear shaped. Four little tabs. You just cut them easily now. So the full length, it's all tacked together. So everything's welded except for this one join just here. I need to fully weld that out, it's all tacked together, but um, yeah, you can sort of see that one foot extension, 300 mil extension that I put in there, just to get it so that it looks about right when it's up the top, because from that weld there, actually sorry, from, from there, which is about where the deck is, up to the start, about there, of that bend, that's one standard Jess, so that's the measurement we've used. And it's worked out all right. The little clampy tool thing that I built worked pretty good. It was the first time I've ever made one of them. I've never used one and I've never made one, so that worked out pretty good. But um, you can kind of see how well you can get your fitment on that join there. And those were, again, out of round. They were pretty oval. But by using that tool and just working it around, you end up with a pretty nice join. It's later in the day, I don't know, about 4, four o'clock, 4.30, something like that. Um, it's starting to get a wee bit windy. It gets normally it gets it's flat calm in the mornings here, and it's a little bit of breeze, sea breeze in the afternoon. It's starting to get a wee bit windy, so I might just leave this last well, do that first thing, get up at I don't know five or something, and get it done when there's no wind whatsoever. It's also quite buggy. You get a lot of mosquitoes and midges and things like that in the afternoon here, and I'm starting to get killed. So I'm just going to bail for the day, I think. Before we can go and weld the stainless exhaust pipe in, I want to take you on a journey down here. I need to cut this bit of manky steel out. So that's something that needs to come out in order to finish this area. So we need to, down here, you can see that shape that's in the bottom. That's a, essentially a raised up piece of stainless, three inches high. Our shroud clips onto the bottom there. And there's another piece that goes around the top that's exactly the same shape. And that's what that cutout's for. We never got around to finishing it years ago when we put that first uh, hole in the roof there. We need to finish it now. Because I'm so close to windows, I don't really want to use a grinder here, even though it would be a two minute job with a five inch cutoff disc. I'm going to use the saber saw just so that I can hack it off. It takes a lot more grunt work, but we get there without damaging the boat. Almost there? Arms, uh, arms above head, pushing as hard as I can. I might, um, I'll pass this to you and you can show us. God, it's nice being on the boat in the water. Even if we are working hard. I might just bash it with a hammer. Oh yeah? I'll be able to get it from a hammer. Oh, so, up there you can see, very close, you can see I'm, I'm almost through, but just keep hacking at it. So let's uh, break your bastard. There we go. We'll just get rid of that bit. With the pipe now fully TIG welded, it's considerably longer than when we pulled it down originally. We need to get it back up and it takes two people to do that. So we're getting out onto the wharf. We need the other end up first. So we'll spin the pipe around and that allows us to get it up onto the roof, stand it vertical and slide it through the roof and down into the engine room.
just going to go in the engine room and, and get it in place. Okay. I'm just trying to open up the um, joiner. The joiner is really tight. Okay. Just taking a bit of work. Okay. The opening is squeezed up because of the, the hose clamp, band clamp thing. Yeah. And it's really, really tight to get it on the exhaust. Are you going to be able to? Yeah, it just takes a bit of prying and shit. Oh, good. Does it help? Does it help if I keep it straight, or does it matter? Um. Yeah, no, straight's good. Okay. How straight's that? Pretty good. Do you want the thing in the bag? Poke in the bag. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Are you on? Oh, so close. No, I'm not yet. Uh, can you grab it and try and put your weight straight down on it? Can you like bear hug it and yeah. try and dangle your weight down? Okay, hang on a sec. You ready? Yeah. Oh. No, get no more weight. That's it. That is one standard jest though. <laughs> this is me making the boat sounds. Turbo. <laughs> 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 Once again, out of time, which always happens, I've put a very structural exhaust mount in there for the second. Doesn't actually get that hot up there, you can hold your hand on the exhaust, it's pretty cold by the time it gets to there, so I'm fairly confident that that's going to last the journey over to the other side of the marina. But I will be building a new exhaust mount, it'll go up on the roof up here, from the exhaust across to the roof, because in front of here I've got two more exhaust pipes to put, one for the small generator and one for the big generator, so that's why we've got so much room around that exhaust up there. And then the funnel that needs to be built up on the roof itself is essentially a big hollow box with a big vent in one side of it. And that's where the air going up that column, the stainless column that goes up the outside of this exhaust or the three exhausts, the air will pass up that column, go into the funnel at the top and out the vent on the roof. And that has to have a flap so that if we ever have a fire in the engine bay, we can close that vent off and therefore no air can actually get into the engine room. We have these are our fresh air inlets, these these big, where are we? These diagonal things here. There's two on each side of the boat, one and two, two sides, so there's four vents. Um, they have flaps in them as well to block off air going in, so every possible path that air can take to get into the engine room has to have a flap to be able to shut off so that we can close it when we dump the CO2 into the engine room if we ever have a fire in there. Just want to change the plan. Uh, we're not moving the boat tomorrow. We're moving the boat uh, in three to five days. Uh, there's a cyclone just north of us, and it's delayed the boat that's heading south. He's staying in port until this thing blows through, and then he's going to come south. So we've got a couple of days extra. So we're going to go and finish that exhaust properly and build a decent exhaust clamp to hold that thing onto the roof. But to do that, we need to jump into the race truck, head into town, and buy a big six inch exhaust clamp. Um, we've run out of them, we don't have any more left, and we need them before we can actually fit this exhaust properly without creating stress fractures by welding something directly onto it. Parts acquired. So these are the six inch exhaust clamps. They're a, basically a big uh, U-bolt with a like a bracket underneath that sort of supports the exhaust. I'm gonna be mounting them horizontal like that. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm gonna be mounting them horizontal like that, but I'm gonna be rubber mounting them up the top as well. Um, I also grabbed the same thing, but tiny for the generator. I also grabbed a V-band clamp for the generator exhaust. So this disconnects the generator from the exhaust when we're building it. And I completely forgot that I ordered a whole bunch of um, gasket paper for the exhaust, the main exhaust, so that we can make new flange gaskets if, if we ever need to. So that was pretty cool. I completely forgot all about that. All right, this is how these mounts work. So they clamp onto the pipe just like that. I've got a finger tight at the moment. But basically what they do, by not welding anything on here, you don't have any hot spots and therefore you don't have any stress cracking. Originally, for about three seconds, I was thinking of welding a mount sort of onto the pipe itself and then just a piece of flat plate coming straight out with a couple of rubber um, rubber mounts underneath it and I thought that's going to create a stress crack here when I say here I actually mean up the top here is where it's going to all be welded but I was thinking that's basically going to create a stress crack just at the roof level and then everything all the pipe above the roof level is going to therefore be you know right on that it's going to crack and it's going to break it was a stupid idea so I, I decided stuff it let's go and get some of these so what I plan to do is basically mount one of these onto some rubber 
mount and then this is going to get clamped to the exhaust so the exhaust doesn't have any welding to it to hold this but it ends up being completely rigid so i cut some stainless i cleaned the stainless i bent the stainless i welded the stainless in a fancy kind of way i drilled the stainless and then i countersunk the stainless is that going to bolt on oh that's going to bolt on So with these mounts orientated in this direction, the weight of the exhaust and all the load is basically trying to go down through the mount rather than like pull the mount or jag it sideways or anything weird like that. So the mounts will last longer in this orientation. Plus we've also got 12 of the, these mounts as spares on the boat, so it's not like we're ever going to run out of these in any time soon.